Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, today I want to take a few minutes and discuss the UFC releasing Kevin Lee from its roster after 18 fights. Um, before we dive into this guys, if you enjoy the content, just subscribe, give it a like, all that good shit, fuck, right? All the stuff I have to ask you guys to do. Anyway, the UFC has released Kevin Lee after 18 fights. In those 18 fights, he compiled a record of 11 and 7, right? So, I want to like kind of break down Kevin Lee's career and where I kind of think things went wrong. So he starts off, he makes his UFC debut against Ally Quinta. I believe he's 22 or 21 years old at the time, right? Young kid, a lot of hype around him, loses a unanimous decision. And then he goes on to pick up four wins in a row before running into Leonardo Santos, who by the way, fights Clay Guida this weekend at UFC 194. I remember this very vividly because I went to UFC 194. It was McGregor versus Aldo and I placed a three bet parlay and one of them was Kevin Lee and I remember thinking that Kevin Lee was the shoe in and it turns out that he's the only one who lost right he was the only person on my parlay who lost and I just remember thinking about all the hype around Kevin Lee and thinking there's no way he loses this fight I mean granted in hindsight Leonardo Santos is a pretty tough opponent right coming off the ultimate fighter Brazil victory that he had all that shit right anyway gets knocked out there but then he rebounds and picks up five more wins in a row right and all but one of them are finishes. So he beats Francisco Trinado via rear naked choke, right? In March 11th, on March 11th, 2017. A couple months later in June, he taps out Michael Chiesa in the first round via rear naked choke. And now this is where the hype is getting real around Kevin Lee. People are like, oh, fuck, this is the next big thing. But you guys got to remember at the time, he's only still 25 years old, right? The next fight they give him is against Tony Ferguson for the lightweight interim championship, right? It's not so much. You got to remember what was going on at lightweight at the time. Conor McGregor had won the belt back in November of 2016. Boxes Mayweather in August of 2017. So there's all these talks of interim titles. Ferguson had tried to match up against to be back in March and that didn't work out, right? So you get to October and Kevin Lee is kind of the guy who steps into this opportunity that, in my opinion, he wasn't really ready for. I mean, he looked good against Tony. I think he, this is a fight that he showed up with staff on his chest. He looked good in certain aspects, but you could just tell as the fight started to progress on that he wasn't ready for that five-round type of war. He hadn't been groomed enough for this position yet. This, When this fight was made, it really bothered me because I felt like Ke Kevin Lee had the talent to win but I just didn't think that he had all of the veteran sort of prowess that he was going to need to rely on that experience in a title fight, right? I thought this was also, you guys got to remember when Tony Ferguson was at the top of the motherfucking heap. Like people were really debating about whether Tony Ferguson was going to be able to beat Habib, like who was going to be the victory there. And I think your top three were Connor, Tony, and Habib. I think it's pretty clear who came out on top at the end of all that, right? Now looking back on it. But at the time, you really didn't know. And Tony Ferguson was a bad motherfucker who was hard to deal with. So Kevin Lee kind of gets thrust into this spot, right? And he loses the fight. It was a close fight. He could have won. And you kind of think based on his performance, he's still kind of ready for these upper echelon of guys. So he goes on to fight Edson Barboza in his next bout, right? He misses weight. Edson Barboza hits him with that fucking spinning wheel kick and it rocks him. He survives it and Kevin Lee ends up picking up a fifth round TKO, but he takes damage in that fight, right? After a hard fight against um, Tony Ferguson. His next fight is a rematch against Ally Quinta, who he lost his UFC debut to. Loses that fight. Didn't hate that matchup, all things considered, right? Considering what was going on in the last, Ally Quinta was kind of surging at the time. That fight kind of made sense. Where you lose me, and where things really start. First off, he should have never fought Tony Ferguson, in my opinion. I think that put unfair expectations on him, right? Because I think when he lost that fight, he did well enough that people were like, eh, if he didn't have the staff, if he did this, if he did that, he could have won. He's a title hopeful right now. When you are young, like, and you see this with guys like Cody Garbrandt, when you're young like that, even if you do accomplish it or perform well against one of the elite athletes just because like or somebody at the top it doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for top five competition religiously right like cody garbrandt had a tremendous like rocket ship type of career where he just took off and ended up fighting Cruz and beat him right but you kind of find out 
that in terms of fighting maturity and fight IQ, Cody wasn't ready for what it takes to fight these top five guys on a religious basis and do so and find success against them, right? He got into firefights, etc. Just inexperience coming into play. After the, the, this is more egregious than the Tony Ferguson one because you kind of got to give respect for to Kevin Lee for stepping into that spot. I think at the time he was probably ranked like five or six or something like that, and he had to step up and fight Tony Ferguson. But like I said, Justin Gaethje had just made his debut against... Th there weren't a lot of options that made sense to step in and fight Tony Ferguson. You got this kid who just tapped out Michael Chiesa. He's been blitzing through everyone. There's hype around him. He's young. I kind of get it, right? I didn't completely agree with it. I thought it was too much too soon, but I kind of get it. Where you really fucking lose me is when you give Kevin Lee, Rafael Dos Anjos after losing to Ally Quinta. As Kevin Lee's welterweight debut, he's debuting at 170 after going through weight miss issues, right? You hand him Rafael Dos Anjos, who has just moved to 170 pounds, had successful fights there, looked really goddamn good. I believe he fought, let me look it up real quick. I think he fought uh, Safadine, and then he went on to beat Neil Magny, and then you make Kevin Lee debut against him. So a guy, you're coming off, you've lost two out of your last three fights, right? You've beat Barboza, but you got rocked in that fight you beat uh you lost to tony ferguson and you lost to ally aquinta now doesn't it feel like rafael dos Anjos a is a step up in competition from ally aquinta and rafael dos Anjos has had time to get warmed up into the welterweight division kevin lee's making his welterweight debut so okay i apologize listen to this so Rafael Dos Anjos beat Safadine, Magni, and Lawler. His next two losses were to Colby Covington and Kamaru Usman. So that's kind of like the excuse that you use to book RDA up against Kevin Lee is that he's lost two in a row. Well, the two people that he lost to are the best motherfuckers in the division. And you're booking Kevin Lee. Do you see what I'm saying? It seems like the odds have been stacked against Kevin Lee, right? So fights Rafael Dos Anjos, loses. Goes out and fights Gregor Gillespie returns to lightweight knocks him out highlight real head kick again though this was a fight where it was kevin lee looked good because gregor gillespie had not really fought that talented of a striker yet a lot of it he was able to implement a lot of his wrestling and everything but you know that kevin lee has a very strong wrestling base so his striking was able to shine through so he knocks out kevin lee after going to train with Faraz sahabi and i think everybody thinks he's kind of reimagined his next fucking fight after this tumultuous career that he's had so far, right? Things have been missing weight, going from 170 back down to 155, knocks out Gillespie. His next fucking fight is against Charles Oliveira. And Charles Oliveira at the time, I believe, had won like seven fights in a row. He beat Clay Guida, Christos Yagos, Jim Miller, David Taymor, Nick Lentz, and Jared Gordon. Six fights in a row before being scheduled to fight Kevin Lee. And after he beats Kevin Lee, he goes on to fight Tony Ferguson, right? And then he beats Michael Chandler for the UFC title. So, and again, it's, I just, I, I can't make sense of that matchup. A guy who had his most recent fight at 155 pounds, granted, was against Gregor Gillespie. But how do you decide that his next fight, considering the losses that he's had throughout his career, Kevin Lee, how do you decide that his next fight should be against a guy who's surging right now at 155 pounds when this guy's been bouncing back and forth between 170 and 155 and alternating wins and losses, right? So then they do him no favors after he gets submitted by Charles Oliveira and match him up against Daniel Rodriguez in his return to welterweight. Another guy who, I mean, just beat Mike Perry and then Preston Parsons within three months of each other right? Clearly has very good hands, is a bigger guy, a hard guy to deal with. It's, I feel like when you look at a situation like this with Kevin Lee, it's very hard to blame Sean O'Malley for not wanting to top, fight these top 10, top five guys, because A, why would you? It's going to, it presents an opportunity for loss. You end up making less money, you risk your UFC tenure, and the more you win, the more eyes are kind of on you. Kevin Lee kind of went into this position where he was extremely young, extremely talented. And because of that, he was fighting guys before he was mature enough in the sense of fighting, right? And maybe even in life. I don't know what his day-to-day -day is like, but 
certainly his fight IQ and the experience that he had was just not enough to carry him through the fights against these top tier opponents. So when you hear about guys like Sean O'Malley talking about, oh, well, I'm just going to keep fighting the easiest guys that I can get or the guys that are going to, I don't have to fight these top 10, top 15 guys. The money's the same. It keeps me on the roster. I keep compiling wins on my record, keep getting on TV. People keep talking about me. And you look at what Kevin Lee did where he took the most challenging fights throughout his career. And it kind of fucked him because he hit it. He ran into too much too soon, right? So when you look at O'Malley, and you're listening to him, you got to remember, guys, O'Malley's, what, 27 years old or something like that? He probably still has three or four years before we really see him in his prime. I don't blame him looking at what just happened to Kevin Lee for cherry-picking his fights, going through things, and making sure that he's fighting the appropriate contender at the appropriate time in his career. Otherwise, you get stuck in these situations where, again, you take on too much too fast, and maybe you look good. Maybe you look good like Kevin Lee looked good against Tony Ferguson. You have these glimpses, right? Or maybe you look good, like really good, good enough to win like Garbrandt did against Cruz. But it doesn't mean that you are mature enough in your fight career to religiously fight top flight talent, right? It's just my opinion. I think that, and you know, there's nobody showing these guys the way. So this is kind of on Kevin Lee and Sugar Sean O'Malley. They have to figure these things out for themselves and be selective about the fights and not just take the things that get handed to you because you got to think about yourself because the UFC is going to think about a business. And if they can get a young champion in there, right, and they can promote you, you're this new young thing, they're going to try to do that. They're going to try to push you into fights early because it's a business. And if you do happen to pan out, great. If you don't, you were this young kid who lost it. Like to them, it's just a business. But do you... You have to be in charge of your career. You have to take intelligent fights. And you can't let the UFC kind of bully you into these positions where you're fighting people that you're not ready for, right? I kind of feel like that's what happened with Kevin Lee. And when you look at the landscape of all, like all these different divisions and all these young fighters scattered throughout them, I think they can learn something from this and learn to be selective. You do not have to be in a rush. This is about, if you look, John Jones is also like an exception. And I feel like people kind of chase that. They want to be like the young champion, but More often than not, it does not pan out that way. More often than not, especially with how good people are getting at fighting, you need to progress slowly through your career, slowly fight more and more challenging opponents, deal with people who have more and more layers to their game. And um, yeah, I just feel like that was never really the case with Kevin Lee. I feel like he always just got fed a little bit too much um, too soon. So anyway, I know I've said the same thing like 20 fucking times, but I don't know, man. It just felt, it felt a little bit wrong to me. Like the UFC should have been a little bit more concerned about the matchups they were giving Kevin Lee, but they're not. They're concerned about the business. So it's, you know, you hear Sean O'Malley saying all this shit. It's like, damn, can't blame him at all. Anyway, I'm done rambling on this one, guys. Thank you for tuning in and listening to my nonsense. Uh, Again, if you enjoyed, please subscribe, comment, all that good shit. Let me know what you thought of his release. Let me know where you guys think he's going to end up, right? Because you got Triller doing all this stuff, and he's openly said, I'm going to go wherever they give me the most money. And if you're going to put your body on the line for this fucking sport, why not get paid for it, right? So especially if you're not in the UFC. Like the UFC is kind of where everyone wants to be, but if you can't be there, does it really matter? No, you're going to go whoever pays you the most. So I think Kevin Lee's going to go to wherever he gets the biggest contract. Um, and yeah, man, it's, it's going to be a tough road for him to fight back into the UFC because he's 29, right? So I don't know. It's and he's put a lot of he, he eighteen fights is a lot of fights to amass by the time you're twenty nine, in the UFC alone, right? Eighteen fights in the UFC. So, fuck man. I think there are worse fighters on the the problem with the whole release too is I want to touch on this. There are worse fighters on the roster than Kevin Lee, right? He's kind of just been fucked by this poor matchmaking in my opinion. So, anyway, I'm really done now, guys. I'll catch you later. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye.